If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. Welcome to another episode of the Women in Power, Politics and Entertainment. This program is being broadcasted in Nigeria and we hope to go through the entire Africa searching for women with repute, dignity and accomplishments. As you all know, I don't do this alone. Today my guest on the program is a public relations, communications and marketing strategist with over 15 years of experience. She is going to be telling us on how she has been able to navigate career life and family life and also community development and other interesting stories about her. She is no other person than the Honorable Commissioner of Communications, Choir State, Honorable Mrs. Bolani Olukoju. Don't go nowhere. It promises to be an interesting episode and I remain your host, Salma Pabi Akiushola. Okay, so I grew up in Zaria. I was born and bred in Zaria, Kaduna State. So I'm more of a, I have a northern orientation in terms of growing up. Growing up was fun, and the second of four children, but I'm the first girl. And as when I was ten, they brought me to Paris State for secondary school. Which, looking back now, I am grateful for them. But initially, I felt they were not my parents because they took me from far and brought me from Zaria. Because I was the only one they brought to a boarding school. But that perception has changed, changed my entire life, the way I live, the way I see life, the way I relate with people. Because, you know, from a young age, at age 10, I was pretty good in school. So I was like, then going back, I had good, I went, I went to ABU Zaria, Magdalene University. I did, I'm surveying and geophomatics, engineering now. That's what I did. But immediately I left, I knew I wanted to do communications. Because even when I was in school, I used to go to my, friends who were in mass form, I used to go and sit in their classroom. So I already knew I wanted communication, but my father was so bent on me doing engineering. So I, of course, I did the engineering, I did everything, I gave him the certificate when I was done. So I faced communication, and I've been practicing for over 16 years now in the communication space. I'm a marketing communication professional. I call my sub expertise is public relations, crisis form, Reputation management. So that's a little bit different for myself. Okay, alright, uh, ma'am. So, um, how has it how has it been for you since you assumed the office of a commissioner? Hmm. You know, one of the things I found out was that a lot of people had stereotyped communications to a man. In fact, I was in a conversation with somebody, and it was like, the person was arguing with me. That he knows the commissioner of communication and he's a man. I said, What person is there? I said, you, If you see the person, do you know him? <laughs> he said, Yes, he knows Bola Olukoju. There's a man. I said, Okay. Do you know what the person does in terms of work? And I said, Yes, that he hears the person is always on radio, always doing this. I said, okay. After the conversation, when I was going to show him my ID card. Oh. And I left. The man was running after me and read it. So those are the kind of things you get to see in terms of people thinking that okay. And how has it been? Sincerely, it's a whole narrative because I, I moved from public and um, private sector to the public space. So there's a whole lot of things we had to change and we had to bring up to speed. And um, it's been uh, it's been a journey, you know, and it's been very interesting because we have been able to scale up the way we distribute information in the states and you know being um, at the helms of communication it means I have to know what's happening in all the MDAs across the states so it's not such a ride in the park it's a whole lot of work but at any point in time I can tell you what's happening across every ministry oh. who have been agent, so yes.
side yesterday, two of them were with me on an official tour because they went to pick them from school for midterm. But they quite understand the kind of work I was doing. But earlier in my career, I took out eight years to take care of family, to watch children go, go to school, preschool, till they got, when the last one was in primary school, as in she was, when, she, when I had the last child, then I started doing something. I started doing um, my radio TV program to be able to start doing something. But in between, I was doing courses. I wasn't just sitting at home. So I was a remote worker, but I was making my own money the way I wanted. So I took out time to take care of them. So when they were now grown, I just pushed. And everybody said I was heartless then, but I moved all of them to boarding school. So for boarding school, it was, that is one decision I never regret making. Because I have seen the difference between if they were going to a day school and they were going to a boarding school. So that at the home front. You know, family, husband has to understand that the work has to go on. So what I need most now is the support system. Because at times I have to stay late in the office till, you know, to the wee hours of the morning because we have some things to do. We have to leave rules. Husband has to understand that this woman is working and he has to do this because I had put in the work earlier. So now is the time to put in the work for the state government. And sincerely, um, in terms of trying to balance, when I have time to rest, I have time to rest. I um, kind of delegate and do a lot of delegation because you have to also empower people who work with you. Okay. That's the only way you are able to find balance. Because if you keep on doing it by yourself, you will burn out. So empower everybody who works with you. Let them then have a strategy. I always sit with my team at the beginning of the week. We always have a strategy. What do you want to do? This is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, so that everybody is fully aware of what they're going to do and it doesn't burn down on you. So you still have, you know, me time is very important in all of everything. Yeah. yeah. I think my, um, it's yeah. been, yeah. okay, so it's been a few months, or oh, should I say going to a year already, working in the public office. So um, being in the private world and in the public world, what would you say is different? <laughs> different, <laughs> different like this. <laughs> because there are some ideals you come with from private sector. That when you come to public sector, it looks like what's wrong with this person? In this now we do this here. Okay. So it's a whole lot. I know private sector, you can sit down and take a decision and brief. But here you have to go through processes. You have to go to the public sector, to the director. They have to meet files. So it was a whole lot. But I found a way of telling that see, we can always save time for ourselves instead of dragging that whole so it's a whole lot. And because of the trend in technology, the public sector is also trying to adapt some technological improvements and it's making work easier for everybody. So I think I know it was a it was a struggle, but they are quite adapting to change. Okay, okay so my part as technology impacted your daily life as well. I want to say private sector because I am very sure there is a designed um, system for technology in the private sector. So, as your daily life as a commissioner has to be impacted. Okay, as as a commissioner, okay, one of the things I'm a Google certified professional, so I normally used to train. I used to train small business owners in past for digital skills. So I have Google certification, I have Facebook certification, so I'm a well-rounded IT person. And I practice very well in tech ecosystem. So for me, it was just onboarding my tech skills, bringing it to the ministry and carry everybody along. You know, instead of sitting down and having long meetings, we opted for virtual meetings, instead. How do we automate spaces? How do we set reminders? How do we know what's happening? How to use listening tools to know what is happening in the government, know what we're saying. Saying, and leveraging a lot of things. So we were able to bring in a lot of technology. Because if you know me, I basically work on tech. Mm -hmm. I have my phones are adapted, my watches. I use this for everybody like, why are you wearing something? I use Sparkle because I used to look at information and to send messages. Somebody is calling me, I need to respond. You know, I've been able to incorporate my own space with tech and everybody who works around me. So that the work is easy. Once you infuse tech, work is easier. And you save a lot of time. So a lot of things they do in the public sector is that they drag a lot of time. So I can say, what, how can we automate this thing and save a lot of time? 
So I've been able to do that at least in my ministry. And I'm also trying to also work with my other colleagues and see how they can also infuse this into their workspace. Minding that for every ministry you have a press secretary. Press secretaries are from the Ministry of Communication. So it's my own duty here to train my press secretaries, bring them up to, up to speed, put some technology trends in them, help them with technology tools, and now take them, push them out to ministry. So that way they are able to, yeah, have to work Exactly. Them. So you see, I'm just trying to make my life easy and everybody around me. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. All right, beautiful people. I am enjoying this session, and I'm very sure you all out there are enjoying it too. We'll go on this quick break on the right now. All right, beautiful people. We're back from that break. And yes, we're still on the program, and we still have our jobs to us. All right. OK, so back. So um, how have you been able to navigate the real dominated politics in Paris? Because I am very sure they, they believe the male, the male, uh, the, the other gender, they believe the, uh, the person. Have you been able to navigate? Because um, I have heard people talk about how they, they have, um, when they try to give corrections, when they try to talk to any new working on the on the weekend, they tell they tell they tell that a woman can't keep in orders. Have you been able to navigate things? So all my life, I've always worked with men. <laughs> so, and one thing about men is that they have their ego, which if you want to succeed working with them, is that respect their ego. Don't bring them down. Just respect the ego. And but when it's time for you to stamp your feet, you stamp your feet. I always say, as a woman, when you sit at the table with men. Don't speak because you're a woman. Speak because you're a human being. So that whatever you say, they won't say, oh, she's a woman. They'll say, oh, this makes sense. Let's go with this idea. So from 2019, I've worked in the political space now as a strategist. Sometimes when we have meetings, there are 25 men. I'm the only woman on the table. And we sit there. I don't talk. I don't get into I don't banter. Mm -mm. That's why when people sing, people say, I'm not emotional. I'm, I'm not sentimental. Very objective. So when they talk, everybody talks. So as a woman, you're supposed to calculate quickly, put what they are saying together, sift it, then you give your own advice. At the end of the day, whatever you say stands, because you know, you know, that's the woman power. Just quickly sift what the men are saying, put it together, and put it out there. So for women, a lot of things that happen to us is this imposter syndrome. We don't really believe in ourselves. We always look down, say like, no, I can't do this. Uh, it's too much. Why don't you take a swipe at the table where men are sitting down and see what, what, what is it? You know, I was speaking to an older friend of mine who is a mentor and is my mentor. So he was saying something. So I was like, come, Bola, what is it that I even know that you don't know? <laughs> because at every point in time, we always have a problem. And one thing I want women to also do is that see life beyond lifestyle. See life beyond beauty and fashion. Watch sports get into the politics of things. When they are talking about football, you don't need to watch football to know how to talk about football. I watch football highlights. I don't watch football. So that when we get into the conversation, when you're talking about one team is buying one person, I have an idea about it. If they are fighting in Ukraine, I know what's happening because I have to keep myself up to date. So that these are the conversations that make men respect you. It's not when you say, they say oh, how much is the latest What does a man want to do with you? He's not even sure he wants to buy it for his wife. You understand? So those are the things that you have to really get in tune with it, know what's happening, be able to talk about matters. Go, it goes, we talk about matters in the tech space, talk about matters, business matters, read books. So that when they bring up conversations, you can also put in one or two things. I'm not saying be quick to talk, but listen and know when to talk as a woman. Because there's always tendency for them to look down at women and say, no, she's a woman, let me know. As long as there's a table, I have a seat on it. And if you don't give me a seat, I bring my own. We all sit on that table together. Yeah. That's really beautiful. All right, now, so, okay, what motivated you to go into public relations and communications? Motivated. So, as a child, I always loved to, I was always misunderstood because I was different. I'm a creative. And you know, creatives, you want to do something in a certain way. People don't see, they're like, what is wrong with this? Why is she doing this? So I had the order I needed to communicate clearly. 
I know the thing about communication. It's not what I say out. It's what people receive. So what am I saying and what are people receiving? So I started to do a little bit of, so I got into school plays, I got into public speaking, I got into um, handling events. I do, I was, what I was a company. I used to compare multi-millionaire events, industry events, you know, so I'm not afraid to speak in public. Then I now discovered, then I watched, um, so I wasn't, I was doing more of marketing calls. Then I watched a series called Scandal, and that changed my perspective of what I wanted to do with my life in terms of my career. That's when I went into crisis called reputation management, because two things, we had the internet, we had people. People were always get into trouble. Reputations will always be damaged. I'm a PR person, so why don't I move my business online and try and recreate people's personality online? Try and see how we can make people have a better face on. So that's what I, that's what motivated me to go with that. So far, so good. It's been very good, and that has helped me navigate into the public sector. So. What is culture mean to you? Culture. Culture is... For me, culture is about your values. Who you are, where you're from, what you do. That's a culture. You know, and most of um, our culture is now being westernized. People seem to have... That's why our values are fast depreciating. People don't understand, you know. I went to some. I went somewhere yesterday. When my kids came back from school, I told them I went for a walk too. And we got into a house. There were elderly people there. My son, my son is very tall, got in a frustrated flat. And the man said, "It's long he has seen a young person really go because the Yoruba greeting you have to frustrate people. That's well done." In my mind, I said. When this boy wakes up the money, you cannot tell me hi mom. He has to go flat. So it is a norm for greeting. Those are the values. You know, the, the children with greeting and say, hey, don't leave them alone. That's how they greet now. No? That's not how they greet now. That's our culture. The things we hold dear to ourselves. The things our forefathers passed the past to us. In terms of, you know, communal living. Like I told you, I grew up in the north. There's a lot of communal living in the north. We eat in the same place. We go to our friends' houses. We're not afraid of what our neighbor. No, we we'll go anywhere we want to go to. So, basically, anybody I grew up with in the north, we all call ourselves cousins because we had that family lifestyle. That's what is fast and ready now about our culture. You see, culture it goes beyond the way of life. It goes way. It goes beyond your dressing. People believe that when you dress a certain way, you are very cultural. No. It's what is inside of you that makes you who you are. All right, people. I am enjoying every bit of this. And I hope you're picking more little from this too. Culture. Your culture is not all about your appearance. Your values matters too. Don't go nowhere. It promises to be an interesting episode. And yes, it is already one. I remain your host, I'm not happy about you. Welcome back after a quick break. We're still on the learning path, politics and entertainment. And yes, our delectable, beautiful guest is still with us. Alright, so Ma, would you now agree that women are being given their rightful place in politics? Women are fighting for their rightful place in politics. Okay, They're not being given. Mm. Because when you look at the statistics of women in politics, you fight to get there because if you look at the contest, the election was between man and a woman. And we were not, we did, it wasn't handed up to us on the platter of gold. We worked for it. So, take for instance, coming home, look at the um, executive council of the parasite It's a, people say 50 50. No, it's not 50 50. Because we have 10 women and 9 men. So, women are in the majority. And one thing is that whenever you put a woman in the hems of affairs, there's always a difference. Because the woman is working to prove you that she can do it. So we always make a difference. So women are fighting and they are now getting their rightful place okay. in politics. Thank you so much. So um, many of you, the governor, Madame 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 Madame
for his inclusion of youth and women in government. What's your assessment of the youth government? Yeah, so, um, you know, there's no place I go to that I don't talk about His Excellency Malam Abdurrahman Abdurazak, the Executive Governor of Kwara State, who is also the Chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum. You know, one thing you cannot take away from him is that he's very futuristic and he's very visionary. He sees beyond the now. He's looking at 10 years from now, 15 years from now. If I empower these people, if I do these things, what is going to be the resultant effect to the state? You know, we want to be talking about people who have spent 30 years, who, like, we talk about when they were um, in power 30 years ago, what did they do? Quara has a teeming, vibrant youth population. Very, very vibrant. Very, very industrious. So what we're trying to do is the governor is trying to tap from this and enhance their potentials to help them deliver and make the kind of Quara they want. If I ask you, what is the Quara of your dream? You have the Quara of your dream. We are gradually building the Quara of your dream. Then the youth, the young people in the government, of course, you might be at the hems of affairs, but you sit on a management team. So you're not alone. So the thing for a young person is that the young people are delivering. Because they also have, like I said, they also have to prove a point. It's just like the youth and the women. They have to prove a point that, yes, we can do it. So when I look at younger people, I'm like, if you're given a chance to do something, prove that you can do it. So that it opens up another door for you to be able to do much more. So the governor, like I said, futuristic, very visionary. He is now tapping actively into the vibrant youth community in our state. Very much. So we're going to dive the tension a little bit on the official parts. <laughs> okay, so what are your hobbies now? Hobbies? Oh, I love cooking. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. I cook. There is no dish I cannot cook. No problem. <laughs> you know, when I tell people that, if I don't know a dish, so this is what we do, me and my kids, we'll constantly shuffle and say, ah, I haven't we? So at times, there's no food that we, my kids have not tasted because I've cooked. I can cook Igbo soup, I can cook Hausa, I can cook Bini, because um, my husband is from Edo State. Okay. Yes, I can cook Edo soups, I can cook any Yoruba soup, go to Edi Kai, any soup you think about. If I see it, I will go and find out how to cook it. I can remember I wanted to cook my Igbo soup. I went to the market. And I told the mother, Madam, I want to cook this soup. Sell all the ingredients for me. I know how to cook it, but I don't know the ingredients. She now told me what to do. And guess what? I made the soup and it was packed. So I love cooking. I love traveling. Yeah. I love hosting parties. <laughs> as funny as it is, because I love people. I love networking. It's part of my job. So I enjoy being amongst people, but I love to cook, I love to travel, I love to, what again do I like to I just like being, I like volunteering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love volunteering. Mm -hmm. So I volunteer in a couple of places, mm -hmm. you know, just to give back to the society in a little way. So I enjoy volunteering, it's one of the things I do very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really beautiful. What's your best meal? Ha! Best meal. You know, great of my mom used to say I like yams, but I'm not so sure. I am a vegetable. I love vegetables. Okay. So I eat, I tend to stay with Chinese food mm -hmm. because of the vegetables. I do a lot of vegetables. So, and I'm growing up in the north. You could eat yeah. a bowl of vegetables, yeah, and that's, <laughs> that's your, that's your lunch or your dinner. Yeah. So I love vegetables. That's what I eat most. Yeah. Alright, so what are five things you can leave the house without? Five things I can't live without the house without. One, I can't live without my glasses <laughs> because I can't see oh, funny wow. enough. So I wear glasses that are very, very fashion inclined. So we don't really know that it would be very recommended. Okay. So I can't leave the house without my glasses. I can't leave the house without my phone. Um, I can't leave the house without my sunscreen. Oh, okay. it's hot. <laughs> um, I can't leave my house without water. Because I drink water and it goes steady. Then, what can I leave the house with now? <laughs> I'm trying to see. <laughs> what can I leave the house with now? 
what is always in my bag that I can okay my purse where I have my ATM sometimes I don't have cash but I always have my ATM yeah so I, I can have okay yes. all right okay so to your fellow colleagues of their offices like commissioner uh, is there a plan amongst you people on like a plan on how to effectively execute your legislative affairs yeah, so from time to time, we're, we have like a roundtable discussion with my colleagues where we talk about how to, first of all, because we're in executive council, how to help it, each other. Because from standing from the front point of communications, all ministries are interdependent on each other from one thing or the other. So how do you help your colleague to then, you have to understand what your job description is. To be able to function properly, so we, I try. You know, if I see something, I call this person. This my colleague sees something, calls me, and see where how we can help each other. Mm -hmm. Then from time to time, we just have like a little sit down and just talk about what we can do. Oh, thank you so much. Advice to the youth in general. I would have said parasitic, but then you know, I would love it to go around. Everybody should benefit from this. Oh. Okay. Um, find out what's happening. Don't just stay. Don't stay in the silo. Know what is happening around you. Try and find out what is going on. How can I tap into this? You know, um, three years ago, I felt um, growth and um, product management was the way to go. So I decided to take a course in it to be able to. But mainly, like to because I got another job and I felt that idea was maybe I wasted money but no now what I try to do is I focus it on jobs on campaigns mm -hmm. how to ideate um, ideate uh, an idea then conceptualize it and now push it out there so youth should be curious enough then they should embrace they should develop a growth mindset A lot of the youths are comfortable with hand me down. Yeah. It's not good. It's kind of it alters your growth mindset. You should be able to what is the next thing I can do? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? You know, if you are curious, you start to find out information. You start to want to move from point A to point B. And stop being, you know, one of the things I did in my ministry is that the young people here, oh God, I put everybody on their toes. I had meetings with the coppers. I said, what do you want to do after graduation? Now everybody is now thinking, you know, I told them, how many of you are on LinkedIn? They're like, eh? Oh yeah, everybody. Go and start, go and create. They, when they advertise jobs, most recruiters go to LinkedIn. Yeah. To get, yeah, they would, except um, they know somebody, but most times, the last job I had, I was found on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the way to go for young people. So have a good mindset. I'm not saying don't play, enjoy yourself, but growth is very important. Then seek diverse perspectives. Don't have a closed mindset. Know what is happening in the north. Know what is happening in the south. Know what is happening in the center. We used to joke that the northerners are the most traveled in Nigeria. People used to say no. I said okay. An average house man has gone round and gone to walk in the east, to walk in the. Your other person will stay in one place. You got some people. They say they've never left Lagos before. It's possible. Mm. There's some people who have never left in Lorraine. Yeah. 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 Have a good mindset. Me, like I said, I love to travel. When you travel, you acquire knowledge. Traveling gives you a whole new world. You're able to see things from a different perspective. So you don't have a culture shock. So you know that if you go to Kano, you behave this way. If you go to Enugu, you do this way. If you go to Lagos, you do this. If you come to Ilorin, you do this. So they should have a diverse perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your time. All right, so this section, if you don't think about it, just Keep answer. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Let me eat my nose first. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Boga or shawarma? Shawarma. Homemade food or eat out? Homemade. 
Heels or the flats? Heels. Shoes or sneakers? Sneakers. Alcohol or more drinks? Um, more drinks. Trousers or gown? Trousers. Alright, thank you so much, ma. I am feminism. I support women. I respect men. I nurture children. The globe evolves around me. Evolution is me. I am feminism. Program to bet men of greatness, husband of substance, and children with morals. On women in power, politics, and entertainment, feminism will be showcased at its bloom. I will search. We will discuss with women who has dedicated their life to shine in flying colors. But I can't do this without you. You can watch, you can share, you can contribute, and ultimately you can learn what it means to be feminism. For assistance and donations, you can call 081 22 Thank you.